Hello, everybody. My name is Professor Rich, and this is another military vocabulary video, English for specific purposes. And today we're looking at weaponry and vocabulary related to weaponry. It is absolutely boiling hot in England here today, so I apologize if you can hear my fan, but I need it on. So, let's begin by talking about pistols. So, a pistol is a sidearm. Soldiers can aim and fire with one hand. Pistols are smaller than other firearms, and that makes them useful in close combat. So close combat is combat over a short distance. Obviously, it's easier to disarm someone who has a rifle than someone who has a pistol at a very close distance. Modern pistols, such as the Beretta M9, are semi-automatic. So, semi-automatic means they don't need to be charged like that. You don't need to cock the gun for the bullet to be primed and ready to fire. A semi-automatic means that you can fire and fire and fire. And most modern pistols are semi-automatic. Officers most often carry handguns or pistols. Normally, the service pistol. In fact, the service pistol is the pistol given to the officer for their service and for their position. And in fact, service pistols often have great symbolic meaning. So, if a unit is defeated, a military forces unit, then the commanding officer often gives his sidearm to the enemy commander to show them the unit has surrendered. And of course, surrender means that the unit will no longer fight and will submit to the enemy and drop their weapons and all the rest of it. This is often represented internationally with a white flag or this gesture. Where do we go after the pistol? Well, we go to probably one of the most common modern military weapons, and that is the rifle. So the rifle is a long firearm, which is normally fired from the shoulder. Now, rifles often have sights built into them, and these sights could be iron sights, which is just a guide you use to aim, or they could be telescopic sights. More often in modern militaries, you'll have telescopic sights. To understand a critical feature of a rifle, we have to understand what the barrel is. So the barrel of a gun is the long chamber which the bullet passes through after it's fired. In a rifle, the barrel is very long, and a specific thing about a rifle is that the rifle has twisting grooves on the inside of the barrel, and these cause the bullet to spin after it's fired. The spinning of the bullet improves the weapon's range and accuracy. So that means the range means you can fire the gun at a longer distance. And accuracy means that where you aim is where you expect the bullet to end up. In fact, this twisting grooves inside the rifle's barrel is actually where the rifle gets its name because the technique used to make this barrel with the twisting grooves was actually called rifling. And that's where the name rifle comes from, the name of the firearm. At one time, rifles could only fire one round at a time. However, modern semi-automatic assault rifles, also called assault weapons, can fire multi-round bursts with the single pull of a trigger. So a single pull 
and you get a multi-round burst. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. This type of rifle is called an assault rifle. An example would be the M16A2. Next, in our weaponry vocabulary, we move on to a mortar. The mortar is a freestanding indirect fire weapon. So indirect, you don't aim a mortar directly at the enemy, but you aim it indirectly, normally to fire an arc. Now, a mortar fires shells, shells being basically heavy, ex heavy pieces of metal with explosives in them. Uh, the mortar fires shells at slow speeds and high arcs normally. Operating a mortar requires you to set it up, drop a shell down the tube, the tube of the mortar. That's kind of like the barrel of the mortar. The firing pin then detonates a propellant which fires the shell. Uh, normally, you'll be setting a mortar to a 45 to 85 degree angle, depending on the desired range. Small mortars are portable and they're often used by infantry units. Heavy mortars can be mounted in or towed behind a vehicle. That means that with a heavy mortar, it will be probably on wheels and will be pulled by another vehicle. Towed means that one vehicle is pulling another. Normally a vehicle with an engine is pulling a vehicle without an engine. Next, we move on to one of my personal favorites, which is called in the military a gun or cannon or even artillery. So a cannon is a crew served weapon and it can cause damage from a distance. Cannons are artillery pieces which are muzzle or breech loaded. Muzzle loaded means you load the artillery from the firing end of the gun and breech loaded means you load it from the back which is the end close to you. So muzzle loaded is the end that's pointed at the enemy and breech loaded, loaded from the back. Cannons shoot projectiles on a nearly flat course, so nearly horizontal. A closed ended hollow tube acts as the barrel of the artillery and directs the projectile. Combining the idea of a mortar and a cannon, we have a weapon called a howitzer. And a howitzer can be used for both direct fire and indirect fire, something between a cannon and a mortar. A cannon can shoot projectiles of 30 millimeters up to 460 millimeters or more so some pretty large projectiles can be fired from these things you do not want to be on the other side of one of those are you enjoying the video please hit that like button comment down below and let me know that this video is useful and that this video is the type of video you want more and next we move on to what must be one of everyone's favorites the wonderful tank so tanks are basically heavily armored vehicles. Soldiers use them for frontline warfare. Frontline warfare is the type of fighting that happens right where the enemy is. It's right on the front of the line. It's where you're pushing forward into the enemy lines. Tanks travel on tracks instead of wheels. The tracks are the parts, the moving part of the tank at the bottom. And tanks, modern tanks, can easily travel over obstacles or even move through water. The firepower of a tank comes from a large caliber gun. That's a, a big cannon. And that will be in a rotating turret. So the turret is the top part of the tank 
and it rotates, it turns around. Mounted machine guns on the tank can provide anti-personnel support. What's anti-personnel? So anti-personnel means it's aimed at fighting enemy infantry. And those mounted machine guns are designed to protect the tank from enemy infantry. And so we call them anti-personnel mounted machine guns. Heavy armor surrounds the hull of the tank and this protects the crew and the tank when it fights in a combat zone. So the hull of the tank is basically the skin, the shell of the tank, and around that hull you have heavy armor. And that's really what the idea of a tank is. It's a heavy armored vehicle with a big gun. The M1 Abrams is one of the most advanced and deadly tanks in use today. The M1 has a 120 millimeter M256 smoothbore cannon. What's smoothbore? Well, smoothbore means that the barrel doesn't have rifling. Remember we said that the barrel of a rifle has a twisting groove? Well, a smoothbore cannon doesn't have a twisting groove. Now I'm going to ask you some questions to see what you remember about the video. Each question will be followed by the solution. If you need extra time, then make sure you pause the video. What do you call the type of weaponry that you can aim and fire with one hand? It's called a sidearm and specifically we looked at pistols. What's the significance of a commanding officer giving his sidearm to an enemy commander? That's right, it means the unit has surrendered. What do you call a firearm which doesn't need to be charged between rounds? It's called a semi-automatic firearm. And we talked about the Beretta M9, which is a semi-automatic pistol. Where does a rifle get its name from? Why do we call it a rifle? It's named after the technique, the machine technique, used to create the barrel, which creates twisting grooves along the barrel, which spin the bullet after it's fired. What's the purpose of that? Why do you want the bullet to spin? because it increases the range and accuracy of the rifle. What do you call the part of a rifle which is used for aiming? It's called the sights, and these days they are often telescopic sights, although you can also have iron sights. What's normally the significance of an assault rifle or assault weapon? What's special about it compared to any other rifle? So assault rifles can fire burst rounds. They can fire multiple rounds with a single press of the trigger. What do you call the weaponry? which is used to indirectly fire shells at the enemy. Yep, it's called a mortar. Heavy mortars can be mounted or towed behind vehicles. What do you call small mortars which can be carried by infantry? They're called portable. What's the name of an artillery piece 
which fires almost horizontally. It's a gun or cannon. What's the difference between muzzle loading and breech loading? Muzzle loading is when you load the shell from the end facing the enemy and breech loading is when you load the shell, load the gun from the back. What's a howitzer? A howitzer is basically a gun which can perform the role of a cannon and a mortar so it can fire shells at a high angle or it can fire shells at an almost flat plane which part of a tank is responsible for its movement that's the tracks what do we call an object which is getting in the way of the movement of a tank. It's an obstacle, and normally tanks don't have problems moving over obstacles. What's the name for a weapon which is designed to combat enemy infantry? It's called anti-personnel. Tank guns are often smooth bore. What does that mean? It means that the firing tube of the gun doesn't have a twisting groove. It's just smooth. And that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. If you did find this video useful and you'd like more English for specific purposes videos like this, please do post a comment down below and let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Hit like, subscribe and comment down below. And I will catch you.